Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Bold and the Beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Hope closes the office door at Forrester as she and Thomas kiss. She doesn't want to think about anything right now and requests that Thomas assist her in forgetting. I love you, Hope, he says, and tells her whatever she needs to hear. Brooke tells Deacon that Hope came to her and begged her to get through to him. Tell Shayla to get lost today. So, you ran straight to our Jay. Lie sneers to Luna in the design office. Like your mother, you never take responsibility. Luna and RG both argue that this is not the case. RG informs her that he noticed Luna was angry, and that's why he summoned Finn and Lai. Finn knows, says Lai. Luna will not be leaving Forrester, according to RJ. Lai tells Luna to say goodbye to Forrester Creations and RJ and never return. RG emphasizes how vital Luna is as an intern, saying, we can't lose her. Luna requests to speak with her aunt alone in order to settle things once and for all. RG leaves. Lai instructs Luna to begin packing. Make the smart choice and leave before things get even worse, Luna. Hope and Thomas kiss passionately in the main office. He assures her that she has his complete and undivided attention before turning her around, forcing her up against the desk and unzipping her dress. As he bends her over the desk, Hope grips his neck and twists around to face him. As Thomas observes her from the sofa, she begins to undress. She climbs on top of him in her underwear and kisses him as he removes her breast strap from her shoulder. Hope pulls Thomas to her by his chain as Thomas makes love to her on the sofa. Sheila says at Deacon's house, I know this is difficult to understand, but we care for one another. You really have feelings for Shayla. Brooke inquires of Deacon. You can see it, don't you? Deacon urges Brooke to look him in the eyes. It's true, I can't describe it. I'm concerned about her. What are you doing greater than? exclaims Brooke. How could you have feelings for Shayla? Deacon claims that he's tried to break up with her before, but she always comes back. They understand and enjoy one other's company. I'm begging you please, just keep an open mind to the possibility that this could be a good thing. Ridge and Brooke both scoff. Deacon swears Sheila will never be a danger to the family. You're going to keep us safe from Sheila? Ridge asks. In what reality is that conceivable? Deacon, frustrated that he isn't getting through to them, claims that individuals change as a result of fear and love. Sheila has transformed as a result of her love for him. Brooke and Ridge both believe she isn't capable. Deacon swears she'll never be a threat to Steffi or anybody else they care about. He promises it. Luna tells Lai in the design office that she hasn't seen her in years. No one knew she was connected to her or Finn. Why can't you just let me... Let you what? Lai interjects. Will you blow up my life like your mother has so many times before? She goes on about her mother becoming pregnant, embarrassing the entire family and disappointing her. She's not sure how she's meant to believe this is all a coincidence. Luna claims she has always been interested in fashion, something Lai would know if she had bothered to get to know her. Has she ever considered herself or what her dreams might be? She's never been happier than she is at Forrester, and she's not about to let Lai ruin it. Lai tells her niece that the world owes her nothing. Something you've never learned from your mother is that you have to grind and sacrifice until you make it. Luna tells her aunt that she would not make her feel as little as she did her mother. She is the older sister, and should reach out to assist her. You're a doctor, right? Yes, I'm impressed, but that doesn't give you the right to disrespect me like this. They wanted to be present for Finn when she was shot, but she refused. Who would do that? We're like family. She will not let Lee pass up this opportunity. I'm not going to let you or anyone else take it away. Brooke and Ridge have left Deacon's house, and Shayla marvels that she has never felt such love and support from him before. He tells her that she should get used to it because he adores her. Shayla declares, I love you. They hold hands. Hope and Thomas dress in the main office, and he tells her that this is a dream come true. Brooke begins to try to enter and shouts out to Hope, Are you in there? How come the door is locked? 
Hope lets her in, and Thomas smiles and buttons his shirt, saying, Hi, you've got to be kidding me. Brooke smirks. Luna tells Lai in the design office that she didn't want to be rude, which is more than he can say about how she's treated her and her mother, but she's not quitting Forrester Creations. Archie does not want me to come, but more importantly, I do not want to come. This is my dream, and I worked really hard to get it. She will not be intimidated by her like her mother is. Lai warns her that she's making a mistake and reminds her that she attempted to make this go away. She walks away with that. Luna lets out a breath. R.G. returns, and he's overjoyed that she defied her aunt. Luna expresses gratitude to him for defending her and given her the confidence to do so. I love being here, and I love being with you, R.J. They exchange kisses. Hope tells Brooke in the main office, we don't need the lecture. Brooke grimaces and tells her she just returned from seeing Deacon, as she requested her to do. She urges Thomas to leave them alone, and after whining to her daughter about her day, informs her that Deacon claims to love Shayla. He is adamant that she is not a threat to him. Needless to say, I couldn't get through to him, she says, but she hopes she can talk to her about Thomas. Hoke is capable of making her own decisions. What's gotten into you? Brooke inquires. Hoke is unaware. What she does know is that she and Thomas are two consenting adults who do not require her approval to be in a relationship. Relationship, exclaims Brooke. I know you don't care for him. Hope claims she has made this known to him. Brooke questions Thomas' honesty with her and with himself. Hope says he loves her, and it feels wonderful. Brooke goes insane. You're experimenting with fire. He was crazy about you, Hope. I'm sure you haven't forgotten. He's like a ticking time bomb waiting to detonate. What is he going to do if he can't control his emotions and feelings? What? Thomas thinks back to making love to Hope and her claiming she's not in love with him and doesn't want to take advantage of his feelings for her in the hallway. This week, Friday the 13th lived up to its terrible rap, as the bold and the beautiful added numerous new photographs to its opening titles. What's so awful about that, you wonder? What's so terrible about that, we say, is that Krista Allen's run as Taylor is almost two years old, and she still just has one blasted image in there, the addition of Naomi Matsuda, Joshua Hoffman, and Lisa Yamada to the mix is fantastic. Kimberlyn Brown in a new glamour image, stunning. Taylor, on the other hand, has been a mainstay since 1990, and her portrayer has done the impossible by not only winning over fans of her predecessor, but also earning a daytime Emmy nomination. So she merits more than a blink, and you'll miss it place. But we shouldn't be surprised. Since Alan's arrival, and even before that, the soap has made it plain that Taylor is an afterthought, someone to pick up Brooke's leftovers when she's sick of them. Taylor was never regarded as a threat or an equal. We had high hopes when the lifelong adversaries buried the hatchet and became friends, a twist that allowed both Alan and Catherine Kelly Lang to shine so brightly that we had to watch with sunglasses on. Instead of moving forward, the show reversed course, restoring Ridge to Brooke's arms and Taylor to the role with the odd woman out. Even worse, we worry the worst is yet to come. Because if Taylor doesn't have a larger presence in the opening credits, it signals she'll have a less presence on the show. And the part could not be any smaller. She was first sent packing to Rome with Steffi. And she's only chimed in on other characters' plots since then. She has none of her own. We've proposed one scenario after another for Taylor, including one in which she can sympathize with Bill and discover that the shot she truly wants to take with him isn't in his back pocket. Unfortunately, it appears that the bold and the beautiful is set on relegating Taylor to the role of the cast aside and forgotten, when the madman who has attempted to murder half the show's characters is front and center in a love story and the world-renowned psychiatrist, who was formerly the Princess of Morocco, is nothing more than a talk-to. Come on. To do the arithmetic, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.